Welcome adventurers, this is the Clay Golem and this is your landing page for our next set of adventures. Here you can access all of the information and trinkets that you find along the way. I would like to draw your attention to the portraits on the bottom left hand side where you may click those to access copies of your character sheet. You may also see that there is a map on the wall and a number of books. As you discover further information along the course of your journey, these things will become available for you to peruse and digest at your leisure. The last thing I would like to draw your attention to is the box on the floor by the desk where I have allocated you a storage space where you may keep all and any items safe on your journey. Let us begin. So this is where the adventure starts truly with the characters first encountering the Vistani camp. Uh, they will be sent here to find out what these visitors are actually doing in the area, possible troublemakers, but indeed they're not. They are simply travellers. They will be greeted on their journey by the leader of this particular group who is a kindly although nervous old gentleman who will indeed encourage the characters the players to join them um, and to talk with them invite them in although cautious in a quite a friendly manner he will talk about their families uh, and the fact that there are lots of children around the camp and that they are traveling from place to place in search of something without ever actually quite revealing what that is. Uh, he will discuss the fact that they have a uh, the Gypsy Queen, uh, whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head, and would invite the party to stay for supper, if that's an appropriate time of day, or at least for a hot meal and a drink around the fire. When the group decide to indulge and, uh, and join them for a meal or a drink around the fire, he shall regale them with the story of their history. Um, with the ghostly figures appearing in the fireplace as he discusses and talks them through their history and their dark lord who he never reveals much information about uh, and relays the story of combat, of injury, of rescue, and ultimately one of victory. At the end of this series, when he has finished this conversation, he will invite the players to visit his Gypsy Queen at their camp for further information to be able to provide help, and he will provide them with information of how to get there different from the written module. Assuming the players accept, he will point them east towards their homeland and tells them to just follow the path until they reach the gates. Beyond the gates, they must stay on the road, never leave the road until they meet the gypsy camp, at which point the party can depart. And they find themselves on a damp, wet, muddy road that leads its way through the woods. Old cart tracks mark the passage of many wagons to and from, probably the ones that Vistani have been travelling with that they have just seen. As the party continue along this journey, they notice a light mist starts to rise from the ground, uh, maybe with a little bit of light rain, it's a little bit chill, but the further they journey along this path, they notice it's slowly getting darker, even though beyond the woods they can still see the sunshine, depending on the time of day, of course. Eventually, they reach the gates. They see them in the distance and they can approach. We can describe those gates. We can tell them that they are foreboding and they get a strange feeling the these gates just kind of in the middle of nowhere is a little bit odd and of course they can approach the gates which open immediately 
with a loud creak as they arrive towards them and they are able to pass through those gates and beyond. Beyond the gates they find the path continues through the woods however something feels slightly different. There is a strange smell in the in the air there's going to be some checks and you realize that there is a smell of death something is rotting nearby now normally they would investigate that and there's a strong chance that they will as one of the players heads to the side of the road they find the source of the stench if they choose not to head to the side of the road and investigate they will stumble upon it in the middle of the road slightly further up just as they spot the corpse they hear a distant wolf howling in the woods as the mists reveal this corpse they can of course search this corpse and investigate it further and you can reveal to them that they find a letter crumpled letter with a wax seal gripped in the hand of this corpse that appears to have been mauled by wolves. Just as they are putting that away, they hear the further distant howl of a wolf and at this point the party will probably decide to hurry on. As they leave the corpse they hear more wolves howling. It appears to be getting closer and they get the distinct impression that they should not hang around they should make haste through the woods into safer territory. As they journey further along the road, eventually, as they're pursued by the howls of wolves behind them, they eventually come to a break in the woods where ahead of them they can see a village. Dark, gloomy, a strong mist descended over the village but at last signs of life and as they approach the village closer the fog begins to get thicker and it becomes harder to see but into view comes to one side comes a large manor house that appears to have lights on and in the gloom and in the darkness actually seems almost welcoming compared to this backdrop of gloom and misery. The mist closes in tighter and tighter till it appears that the house itself is an island all alone amongst the mists, the only apparent safe haven from the darkness, from the dampness. And with that, in theory, the party will move towards what they will come to know as the Death House. And that is where the adventure will begin. Now, obviously, that's just taking through the little story. But I wanted to showcase kind of how this was going to work for you without doing a huge, great big introduction. Um, but this is the idea. This is a series of events. There's a lot of detail needs to go in. Of course, there does in reacting to the characters. It's weird kind of dying, doing a role play without any kind of interaction back. Um, and they've got that full story to come for the Vestini that comes out of the module, etc. But this is how I want my scenes to work and I just wanted to kind of do a short little video to kind of showcase how this works. Now this is the player's view you're seeing here if you hadn't worked that out already. So I'm logged in as Haley. You're only seeing what Haley's going to be seeing. So these images should be able to align with um, the story and what they're hearing, the discussion of the dampness and things that obviously they can't pick up. Now while in the middle of that, when they found that corpse, if we just return Haley to the landing page, in fact, actually, let's not do that. Haley can return to the landing page herself at any time. And there's a copy of the letter. It's already here. In the background, I was able to add this letter onto the landing page. So if they say, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll unscroll the letter and they're going to read it, any one of the players can actually just choose to go to the journal. Um, oh, I have got it there. Uh, but can pop back here and read that letter or pop to the journal to do it. So I just wanted to showcase what we've done so far, bring it all together to show you how that's gonna work as part of the game. 
Now obviously the next part to do is the death house itself where we uh, we get some more interesting things and it becomes a little bit more interactive for the characters and their skills rather than just the roleplay. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think. Take care now.